It's not often that an abstruse legal subject such as jointly developed intellectual property becomes the subject of a major motion picture, but that in fact is what happened with the movie The Social Network. This movie is about the founding of Facebook and who really invented it, but it's rooted in the complex legalities of intellectual property law. This movie is built around a court case between Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, and the Winklevoss twins, who claim that he stole the idea for Facebook from them. The story is very interesting to someone like myself who studies intellectual property, ownership, because it's an example of what happens when you don't follow the established procedures and then you end up with a mess as a result. As the story goes, the Winklevi twins hire Zuckerberg to write software that will drive their invention, called then the Harvard Connection. At the time, social sharing sites were not unknown, as MySpace was already in the market and was doing quite well. The Winklevi supposedly had the idea to focus social sharing websites on specific universities rather than make them open to everyone, as MySpace did then, and as Facebook eventually did also. When the Winklevi hired Zuckerberg, they made their first mistake. They did not execute and sign an intellectual property agreement with him. It's very common practice to draft such agreements. Most large companies use them. I signed one at Kodak. They say very plainly that anything you invent on your boss's dime belongs to the boss, not to you. Zuckerberg could easily have declined to sign, declined to sign the agreement, but he didn't have to. The Winklevi apparently knew very little about writing software. That's why they hired Mark Zuckerberg. Mark eventually decided that their concept was lame, and he went off on his own to design a better mousetrap, which eventually became Facebook. Since the inventions Zuckerberg makes after parting from the Winklevi make no use of their original concepts, as Zuckerberg concludes when he's brought into court over the matter, he feels that they contributed nothing and therefore are owed nothing. Strictly speaking, both the Winklevi and Zuckerberg are co-inventors, as they both contributed elements to the final invention. The rule in patent law is that anyone who is responsible for at least one patent claim is a co-inventor and is thus named on the patent. The fairest way to handle such situations is with what's called a joint development agreement. A properly constructed joint development agreement, and I've seen many, has two basic rules. One, each side specifies what they owned in advance. The agreements usually allow them to keep that material. Two, anything that is developed after the project starts, no matter by whom, is considered jointly developed intellectual property and its ownership is the subject of and is determined by the agreement. If the Winklevi and Zuckerberg had executed a joint development agreement, both would have owned a piece of Facebook as specified by the agreement and there would be no need for a court battle. But the Winklevi didn't do it right. They have, even though they eventually earned $67 million from the court's case, Given the current value of Facebook, which is 24 to 32 billion, that was chump change. Their lawyers probably took at least a third of their 67 million also. I understand the Winklevi are now suing for more. They're not expected to get it. Too bad they didn't think things through at the beginning. A judge recently told them to forget their continued lawsuits. What is not said in this movie is that the Winklevi founded the Harvard Connection well before they connected with Mark Zuckerberg. If they had then patented that invention and never even connected with Zuckerberg, his inventions would still have been viewed as improvements on their patent. And while he could have patented the improvements that he made, he would have needed a license from the Winklevi to practice them. Altogether, the Winklevi were the ones who made the biggest mistakes and lost the most as a result. So the moral of this story is if draft an agreement before you invent with someone else. A patent agreement is like a prenuptial agreement or a will. And make sure that your wishes are respected, not the defaults in the law. If you're considering a joint development agreement of an invention, find out how to do it right. Just check us out at www.alacartpatents.com, write us at rblazy at businessmetamorphosis.com, or give us a call at area code 585-520-3539. We'll be looking forward to hearing from you.